This week in wrestling headlines, Iowa dominated Nebraska. Illinois and Navy pulled off some first big upsets of the season. And can Mizzou actually get onto the podium at NCAAs? Let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name's Josiah, and welcome to the Wrestling Headline segment here on the Fanco Wrestling YouTube channel. And this week, we're talking so much because what a heck of a weekend. I mean, these are the weekends I live for in wrestling. There's so many great matches and upsets and, and dual meets that really started with Iowa and Nebraska. And I'll get to that dual meet in just a second. But first, I want to ask you, if you get some entertainment out of this video, if you get some education on what happened this weekend in these recaps, I want to ask you that you not only subscribe to this channel, but make sure to share this video with your friends and family that also enjoy wrestling on Facebook or Twitter or whatever you are on on social media. It not only helps out the channel, but helps me to continue to keep you updated with what's going on in wrestling. And, you know, the first thing we have to talk about is some upsetting news. Of course, we know that North Carolina, Penn State, but also Arizona State and Presbyterian all had to postpone their matches. Some Those are some of the postponements I saw over the weekend. There may have been a couple of more, but those are some of the big ones that I saw. You know, unfortunately, Penn State had to pause all activities going on with their team due to things going on with the COVID-19 procedures, protocols, everything going on. You know, I would wish the safety to the team, and, and I hope that I see all these teams in action soon because I really wanted to see the Nick Lee versus Sebastian Rivera match this weekend uh, with Penn State versus Rutgers. But unfortunately, we didn't get that but the duel that we did get was Iowa and Nebraska and wow now I've done a couple of videos predicting what I think could happen I mean there was one I talked about where Nebraska had to pull off some things in order to beat Iowa but Iowa just shut all that down and my prediction my actual real prediction for the duel was 29 to 6 and I was pretty darn close because Iowa ended up winning 31 to 6. Now, I was off on a couple of matches, and I'll talk about some of the things that did happen in this duel. So, first of all, Spencer Lee came out strong in this duel. And I, I think that Spencer Lee is somebody who can absolutely win by bonus point every single match. And he started out the season by doing just that with a first period pin over Liam Cronin. What a, I mean, what a way to start out the season. Seriously, what a way to start out the season. Now, the other guy who started out the season strong was Austin DeSanto with a tech fall, and his antics are back. I love watching Austin DeSanto on the match. He's a controversial wrestler, but I seriously do enjoy watching him. He was just kind of toying around with his opponent uh, from Nebraska, as you see here in this video, and just as, as he was going for the tech fall, I believe he got the tech fall ultimately in the second period, and DeSanto, I mean, Start strong start for for the kid. Now the other guys I have to talk about. Max Murin started at 149, and he's somebody I was interested to see how he did at 149 because he was moving up from 141, and he looks like he kind of grew into that weight. He had some time, obviously, to put on some muscle, put on some weight, and he, and he did that. He got the win over number 20 Brock Hardy. I was expecting this to be a match, and it was. It was a good match. Uh, Brock Hardy just coming off a win against Michael Blockus, but Max Mirren was able to shut him down. Now, I will be talking about the full Iowa-Nebraska duel uh, that you can watch on a video in my channel, the full breakdown, everything in detail with each of these matches, but I did want to hit on just some of the big points that happened and some of the other things. You know, Ironman made his debut in an, Iron, uh, in an Iowa singlet, beating Chad Red, uh, which is a solid first win for him. Nelson Brands gets his first win, 2021 win, in an Iowa singlet starting at 184 pounds which was great. I mean, we got to see Nelson Brands instead of a Basad at 184 as, or as excuse me, and the other guy that also didn't wrestle in this match was Michael Kemmer. Now, the Iowa Hawkeyes decided to start Kennedy at 174 instead. Not sure what reason that is. Maybe Kemmer is going through something else, but we didn't get to see Kemmer or a Basad in this match, but the Hawkeyes still did put on an excellent performance. And one of the other guys who put on a great performance is Alex Marinelli, who had a ranked win over Peyton Robb, who's a top 20 ranked opponent, beat him by a score of 9-3, to three. and although the score wasn't too high, and Marinelli isn't always a crazy bonus point scorer, he had total control of the match and, and just showed that he is he's determined this season. He is absolutely determined this season. Now, the one match that I do also want to talk about that was good for Nebraska, uh, because they did get wins uh, with Labriola, but also with Schultz over Warner. That was a great match by Schultz, and Schultz is somebody who I'm really looking to see in the NCAA Finals this year, but Warner showed that he's right there with him, and I think that this is just going to be a crazy match. Again, full uh, crazy match potentially at the Big Tens in NCAAs, and I mean, 
heck of a win for Iowa over Nebraska. Now, like I said, full update, full recap of this match is up on the Fanco Wrestling channel if you're looking for the full in detail. But I want to talk about Illinois in Ohio State. Illinois pulled off a massive Big Ten update, uh, upset. Number 24, Illinois, upsetting number 7, Ohio State, 18 to 5, or 18 to 15, excuse me, 18 to 15. It was 18 to 5, you'd be like, what happened? 18 to 15, they beat them. Holy cow, what a match from Illinois. Now, we weren't sure what we were going to get out of Ohio State this season. We knew I, I was somebody who's kind of always said that, like, Ohio State is a team that you don't want to underestimate. And I think I have to say now, like, Illinois is not a team that you want to underestimate. Now, although Ohio State did start out the dual meet strong with Malik Heinzelman getting a win over number 13, Justin Cardoni, and Ohio State actually did have some good performances, including Malik Heinzelman, who also had a win over Wisconsin. But like I said, like, Ohio State didn't have too bad of a duel. It was just a couple things that needed to turn around. One of the things that I do want to talk about, though, is Sammy Sasso. Now, Sammy Sasso was able to earn a pin over Mikey Carr in the first period. He was able to cradle up Mikey Carr in, in that deadly Sammy Sasso cradle. And Mikey Carr is somebody from Illinois who I've kind of said is, is a dark horse to get on the podium this year. But Sammy Sasso proved why he's able to pin and be at the top of 149 pounds because, I mean, he is just a straight-up savage. An another thing that I want to talk about here is the Bronicles. They were the big reason, I think they were a key reason at least, in why Illinois was able to beat Ohio State. They didn't have crazy, exciting wins, they, they, but they were important. They were important wins. They were big wins. Not big upsets, not exciting, but important wins. Dan Bronigal beat uh, Ethan Smith by a score of 6-5 to five at 165 pounds, and Zach Bronigal beat Rocky Jordan by a score of 2-1. to one. So like I said, just decisions, not crazy wins, but very important. Jordan later, Rocky Jordan, ed ended up earning a win over Chris Weiler, and that's kind of what we saw from a couple of the Ohio State guys. Is Although they lost and, and had upsetting losses against Illinois, a lot of them rebounded, and we saw them do good things against Wisconsin. Both these teams, Illinois and Ohio State, actually ended up beating Wisconsin in the duel, so Wisconsin was 0-2 on the day. Now, somebody from Ohio State that didn't have a great performance necessarily was Hoffman at 197. He lost to Matt Robleski, uh, lost by a score of 4-2, uh, and then ended up uh, wrestling again later in the day. We'll, we'll see how he does against, you know, or, or what Tom Ryan ends up making the decision, whether he puts Chase Singletary in next time they wrestle at 197 because those two at 197 had tight wrestle-off in the room, Singletary and Hoffman both dropping down from heavyweight to 197. So we'll kind of see what happens there, you know, just unfortunate. Now, Orndorff is another guy from Ohio State. Uh, not the best day. First, he lost to Luke Luffman by a score of 3-2, to two, and then he actually had a tight match with Trent Hilger, so he was going for that rebound, you know, trying to get that rebound win, but uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get it. got pinned in the third period when he was going for something crazy. Like, it wasn't like a, a you know, it's not like Tr Trent Hilger was that much better than Orndorff. It was just like, it, it, he kind of got caught in a pin, and and that kind of happened to him. So, but Illinois, holy cow, they're they're looking good. The takeaways from this match is that just it's a tough year, and there's a lot of craziness that's going to happen. Just like last year, a lot of craziness happened with last year, but this year especially, we're not sure what we can get out of these teams, what training situations are, everything going on. But Illinois is building a strong team. They came out here, they won big matches, they got some bonus points, and and, and really just. I'm excited to see what happens with them in the future um, and, and what happens with Ohio State and where these two teams end up in the rankings. Now, you want to talk about some upsets. One team that had a great upset over the weekend was Navy. Navy beat a top 20 Lehigh, actually number 18 Lehigh, for the first time since 2011. What a win for Navy. Now, Lehigh... Although, like, I, I kind of thought that they were a team that was beatable this year. And if you want to crack into that top 20, like, they're a team that, that is able to be beat. Pitt beat them early on. Uh, Lehigh right now is 0-2. Navy is coming off of the Clarion win, which is a good win for them. Although, they also did have a loss to Pitt. Now, they gave Pitt a battle. And a couple of matches didn't go their way. But if they would have, could have beat Pitt. Now, Lehigh... Uh, this is a prediction I made at the beginning of the season, okay? As I said, there's going to be a new EIWA champ. With, between Lehigh and Cornell winning it the last, like, 20-some years, I said there's potentially going to be a new EIWA champ. I think Navy may be the team to do it, and they showed up this weekend. So, 
Lehigh didn't wrestle number nine, Brandon Pazzo, uh, who uh, wouldn't have made the difference. He won by a score of 21-9. to nine. Navy beat Lehigh 21-9. to nine. And there were some big matches. Navy had upsets uh, at 149 and 197, which were very big over top 25 ranked opponents. Tanner, Tanner Schedule extended his record to 5-1. and one. Andrew Coniglia at 157 and Cody Tribus both remain undefeated. Tribus at 141. Both these guys remain undefeated on the season so far, and I'm pumped to see how they do, uh, you know, with the new coach and Coach Colette at Navy. Now, he and the rest of the team are going to have a tight, a tight uh, uh, upcoming duel against Army, which I'm excited to see what happens there. Navy hasn't beat Army since the 2015-2016 season. If you follow anything, you know anything about Army and Navy, these two teams are some of the it's some of the biggest rivalry in in all of sports. The other thing I want to mention about this duel before I get into a couple other things, Oklahoma State and Missouri. I mean, do you want to talk about some great teams this year? But uh, before I get to that, I, I do want to talk about uh, there were no bonus points scored in this entire duel with Navy and Lehigh. I just love the fact that it's Navy is just such a gritty team. And they're able to just pull out those wins. And that's kind of the stuff that I did like to see in this duel. Now, before I get to Okie State and Missouri, I do want to talk about Noah Adams, who rem- who uh, extended his undefeated record to and his undefeated streak to 37 straight wins. He has four wins on the season, 4-0 on the season, but 37 straight wins with a recent win over number 13, Jake Woodley. This was his best win so far this year. And probably going to be for quite a little bit of time. He doesn't have a, a lot of tough opponents coming up, but you know, I mean, anybody can come out of nowhere, you know, to to some extent. But Noah Adams, 2020 Big 12 champ, and was you know number one seed at NCAA is expected to potentially win, and I think is is a heavy favorite this year. Uh, but I'm excited to see what he does. I'm interested to see what his big competitions will be at the Big 12 championships and at NCAA's, and watching him this season with that good ranked win. WVU, uh, his team where he's where he is is. He is three and two on the season with losses right now to Virginia Tech and Oklahoma, but wins over Kent State, Ohio, and Buck now. Now let's talk about some teams that undefeated teams. So we talked about Adams, the undefeated wrestler, but what about undefeated teams? Okie State and Mizzou remain undefeated this season. Now, first I want to talk about Okie State, who's four and zero this year. Now, listen, the, the big the big story this weekend is that is that John Smith extends his wins record, wins to. All-time wins to 443 dual meet wins with his win over Little Rock. Now, which is exciting. It's awesome for John Smith and the Oklahoma State program. Now, the the thing is, like, they haven't really beat anybody this season, right? So you can't be, really be too stoked on them right now. I, I think if they pull off some other big wins, you can be stoked on them. But they beat Chattanooga, Oregon State, SIUE, Little Rock. Like, I, I'm excited for them to be wrestling UNI, Iowa State, Oklahoma. Those are the teams that I'm really going to be looking forward to, Oklahoma State wrestling. But the team that I am, or that listen... I was underestimating them, and they were under the radar, and they were under my radar for whatever reason. But I do want to send a shout-out to the Fanco supporter that really said, put them on your radar because you never talk about them. And Adam McRill, he's a follower from the very beginning of the Fanco Wrestling Channel, and said, I don't talk enough about Mizzou. And maybe you're right, but Mizzou are 7-0 and this season. The team is 7-0. and I mean, they have more dual meets than a lot of other teams. I mean, a lot of teams, like I would— and a couple of these other teams, like I would just wrestle their first dual meet, right? But Mizzou is seven and zero. It's awesome, and I hope that this continues. But they have wins over a over three top twenty five programs right now in Central Michigan, uh, who's a who at the time was top twenty team, Northern Iowa, who's a top twenty team, in Iowa State most recently over Iowa State, and this was a great duel. They beat Northern Iowa thirty four to six this weekend, and they beat Iowa State thirty one to seven. Now there were no crazy wins against you and I, but they did unfortunately lose. Uh, Mizzou did lose the ranked bouts to Brady Teske over Connor Brown and uh, Isley over Zach Elam. So those were some of the unfortunate losses. But now let's talk about the uh, Iowa State duel and. Uh, I have some comments here. So, Iowa State didn't wrestle a couple of their guys. They didn't wrestle Alex Mackle at 125. They didn't wrestle Jared Deegan at 49 or uh, Marcus Coleman at 197. And so, it's like, okay, you know, like we didn't see Kemmer against, uh, with, uh, in the Iowa duel. We, we didn't see some of these other teams like wrestle their, their top starters. And that can be due to any number of things, COVID, injury, like anything could happen. But then, 
We saw Coleman and Mako wrestle in the extra matches. What is the deal with that? Are they dodging these guys? Like, I, that, I, I don't like to see that. I don't like to see the dodging. Like, let's put our best guys on the mat. Let's wrestle. Let's see what happens. Stop saving everybody for the conference championships and, and NCAA. Like, I, I want to see the excitement. Now, maybe there's a good reason for that, but Iowa State's kind of been known for pulling this stuff off. And to be honest with you, I don't like it. But where were some of the big duels that or big matches that uh, Mizzou did win? At 141, number 11, Allen Hart beat number 5. Forward, Ian Parker, big decision. Peyton Mako pinned Julian Broderson, uh, who was a top 15 ranked wrestler, a solid match by Peyton Mako. And Rocky Elon beat Bastida at 197 pounds. Now listen, watch out for Mizzou on the podium this year and leave a comment if you think that Mizzou is going to get onto the podium. And now let's move into some freestyle news, which is USA brought home eight medals at the Delgain over in France. Freestyle in women's women's and men's freestyle brought home those eight medals. Unfortunately, didn't see much from Greco Roman. But as far as freestyle, uh, men's freestyle, Nick Suriano took home gold. Uh, he, and as well as at 57 kilograms, we saw Gilman wrestle Vito, and both those guys placed. Gilman actually won that match by a score of six to two. The other guys who got gold were Yanni at 65, Kyle Dake at 74 kilos, as well as Kyle Slander at 97 kilos. Now Yanni and James Green actually wrestled in the finals. Uh, uh, Yanni won by a score of 5-0, to zero, which is an impressive victory for Yanni. Uh, we also saw Zahid Valencia plays. He plays bronze in Nick Gwizdowski. Both those guys plays bronze. And like I said, an impressive performance by the women's team, putting seven in the finals with four gold medals. Absolutely impressive. And there was just so much excitement happening this weekend in wrestling. Please leave a comment on what you thought of the Iowa and Nebraska match, as well as, like, are Navy and Illinois going to be teams to watch this year, as well as Mizzou? Are they going to get onto the podium? As always, please leave a comment down below. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts and discussing everything with you down there. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel so I can talk to you soon.